Hey all, it's Dave here. I know this format is slightly different to what you used to from here at Answers in Reason, but we are going to try doing standalone videos along with streams. You might have already noticed Joe's excellent video, Evidentially Evident Evidence, where he gives a great introduction to thinking about how to look at something like evidence. It's the first of many videos to come in the sci-fi shorts category. This particular video is not part of the shorts collection though. Instead, it's a commentary on certain arguments that we see come up between atheists, and it's prompted by a discussion I had recently. Most of us will have either seen or been involved in a similar discussion at some point. It seems to be part and parcel of discussions among atheists these days. What was the topic of discussion, you ask? It was the definition of atheism, of course. You can find several videos on the topic here at Answers in Reason. There is also an excellent article written by Philip that I highly recommend that will be linked in the description. I can hear you groaning now, of course. After all, just how many times can this topic be discussed? Now, I'm not arguing for a particular definition or why some other definition isn't really atheism. Instead, I'm going to look at some of the claims and arguments used within that discourse with some examples from the discussion I had the other day. I'll be using screenshots from the Twitter discussion. However, I'll be blanking out the names from the screenshots. This isn't about ridicule, and it isn't about mockery, and it isn't a call to arms. It's simply intended as a look at some of the arguments that were presented in the thread by atheists arguing for a singular lack of belief in God's definition, along with some other common arguments from within that discourse. So, the best place to start here would be with a little background information. There are many, many discussions that I could choose from to highlight the discourse within the discourse. However, this video was prompted by the discussion involving me on Twitter, so that's where I'll focus the background information. So, how did the discussion itself come about? Well, it didn't exactly start off as a discussion about the definition of atheism. It actually started out as a very different question. Someone I follow on Twitter posed the question, does atheism make any truth claims? And as can be seen, there is some overlap between the definition of atheism and the question. After all, whether or not atheism makes any truth claims depends upon the definition of atheism being used. And that was the response that I gave in the Twitter thread in question. This answer seemed pretty uncontroversial to me. It's factual in that there are multiple definitions of atheism, and atheism is seen in multiple ways. The answer also made no declaration that any particular definition was the correct one, or that any particular definition was wrong or not atheism. I I really should have remembered that I was posting on Twitter though. As always, when the definition of atheism is mentioned, there will always be those that attempt to argue what the term means, even when no particular definitions are mentioned. And of course, the reply to my statement was, form of atheism? Atheism is a lack of belief in gods, that's it. And it's here that the conversation started, and from here that we'll proceed this discussion about the discourse surrounding the definition of atheism. There were others that appeared in my discussion with the person that responded, but this was the only person that responded directly to me. It might be tempting here to also point out that there was nobody defining atheism similarly to belief God does not exist that jumped in and declared that that was the only definition, but I feel that would be slightly unfair as the account is mostly followed by those that hold to the lack of belief definition. So the results might have been slightly different if the question was posed by a different atheist on Twitter. So, as we can see from the screenshot, the person in this conversation stated that atheism is a lack of belief in gods, and that's it. They're also not the only person that has made this argument, or will make this argument. We've seen this argument from people like Aaron Ra, American Atheists, and Randolph Richardson, as well as many atheists on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and the like. It's this claim that is the catalyst behind the usage wars, for want of a better term. Whenever an atheist defines atheism as belief God does not exist, or mentions that atheism has multiple usages, 
then we will find those that hold to the lack of belief definition, arguing that they are using the term wrong, or that the person doesn't know what atheism is. The same can be said of the opposite too, of course, though there the arguments are a little bit different. It's not generally the argument that the belief God does not exist is the only definition. Instead, it's often that they find the belief God does not exist definition to be a better definition, especially when it comes to philosophical discourse. Arguing that they prefer one definition over another is not the same as arguing that their preferred usage is the only usage. There might be those that argue the belief God does not exist usage is the only correct usage, of course, or the only usage, but I've rarely seen this, and I can't say the same for the opposite. As I already said though, this video is not about arguing for a particular definition, arguing against a particular definition, or anything like that. This video is about discussing the discourse that goes on when arguing that the a lack of belief in God's definition is the only definition, or the correct definition, and that those who use other definitions are de facto incorrect. So let's begin with one of the most popular arguments for why it is the only definition. So, one of the most popular arguments used to support this idea that lack of belief in gods is the correct and only definition is that's what its etymological roots are. An argument similar to this can be found in Anthony Flew's Presumption of Atheism paper from 1972. The argument being that the a prefix in the word atheism should be read in a similar manner to other words with the Greek prefix a, meaning that atheism becomes not theism, simply not believing in God. And this argument can be seen in many different forms, but all leading to roughly the same conclusion. That atheism is not the belief God does not exist, but simply being without belief in God, or not believing in God. As can be seen from this extract from Flew's paper though, Anthony Flew was not arguing that this means it is the only acceptable definition, nor was he arguing that the belief God does not exist definition should be replaced by his proposed definition. He argues for the incorporation of another usage within the term atheism, and that a distinction should be made between the two. This is very different to what a lot of contemporary atheists are arguing though. They are arguing that the etymology proves that it is the only and correct definition, and that the etymology shows that all other usages are wrong. The problem with this reasoning though, is that it's fallacious. It ignores the fluid and dynamic nature of language, and ignores that it is often the case that many words have more than one meaning, with the meaning depending on context, region, paradigm, and more. This can be seen with a word like theory. Most skeptics and atheists will understand that this word has more than one usage. There's the usage that's used in science, and that has a particular meaning, and the common everyday usage, which has a different meaning. There are multiple uses for a word like bright, chip, football, game, and almost any other word that can be thought of. We also rarely ever see skeptics and atheists today arguing for the meaning of skeptic, and how that should be based on its etymological roots. If we look at the etymological roots of the word skeptic, we see that it referred to members of an ancient Greek school. This means that if we were to define the word skeptic according to its etymological roots, and argue that this is the only correct usage, then most people calling them self-skeptics would have to stop using that term to describe themselves. However, that doesn't seem to happen. It appears that in this case, skeptics and atheists are more than happy to adopt a more modern usage and declare that more modern usage to be acceptable. So, as we can see, the etymological argument for a singular usage of atheism fails. It's fallacious. It's an etymological fallacy. And it's based on a misunderstanding of the way language evolves and changes. It's also applied with inconsistent reasoning, where one word should be held according to its etymological roots, but with others it's acceptable to use a, the more modern meaning and ignore the etymological roots. 
Another argument that's been used to argue for this idea that there is only one definition for the word atheism is that language changes. That while the word might have been defined as belief God does not exist at one time, it's now used in terms of a lack of belief in gods. This part of the argument is something I can actually kind of agree with. I agree with the argument that language changes, and that the meaning of words is fluid and dynamic. However, this argument goes a little bit further than that, which is where the error comes in. When the argument is made, it makes this erroneous assumption that when a word takes on a new meaning, then this new meaning supersedes and replaces whatever previous definition the word has. This is false, of course. It's just not how language works. If we consider it in terms of dynamics, we can see why this does not and would never work. So imagine that a word like pop refers to a particular type of noise, like the opening of a champagne bottle or the sound a balloon makes when it bursts. This is the way the word is used in general in society. When someone says a champagne bottle makes a pop sound when it opens or says a balloon makes a pop sound when poked with a pin, they generally know it refers to this particular type of noise. Now, imagine that somewhere within that larger society, a group begins to use the word pop to refer to a general kind of fizzy drink, but the rest of society tends to use the word soda to refer to that same general kind of fizzy drink. Imagine that it's just a small group of friends to begin with. Is it at this point that the previous use of the word pop becomes nullified and this new version replaces the definition? If it's not at this point, then is it when it grows to an entire town? Or is it when the use grows to an entire county? At what point does the usage grow large enough to replace the previous usage? If it's simply when the new usage grows to a point where it is used by the majority of people, then there are some questions that we must raise. How do we know when the new usage is being used Used by the majority of people. After all, the world's a pretty large place and the English speaking community is greater than just our locale. At what point can we say that it is the majority of people using it this way, rather than simply the majority of people that we interact with using it this way? Another question that we can raise is one that's kind of related to the last one. If it's majority usage that determines whether or not a word is being used correctly, then how exactly does language evolve? After all, those using the word in a different way to the majority would simply be wrong for using it in this non-standard way, wouldn't they? If the majority usage is what determines a word to be correct and the majority usage overrides all other usages, then those using it in a way other than the majority usage would simply be wrong. It seems self-defeating to argue that language is false and that the way the majority of people use a word is what defines how the word is used. The most important question to be asked here though, of course, is why the word atheist works in a way that goes against the conventions of language. If, after all, other words evolve and new usages are gained but do not eradicate old usages, then why does the word atheist work in a way that is counter to this? Why is special privilege given to the word atheism that is not given to any other word that exists in the English language? Any reasoning behind this exception for the word atheism is just fallacious. After all, it's a trivial matter to show that new usages do not replace older usages, but add to the way the word is used. We simply have to look at the way the majority of words are used, at dictionaries, at the way semantics works, and at something like the philosophy of language. All of these things show the complicated nature of language. It's also a pretty trivial matter to show that the word atheism has several usages. Again, we just need to look at the way multiple dictionaries give multiple definitions of words, and the way it's used philosophically, the way it's used colloquially, and the way various atheists use the word. After all, not all atheists define it as a lack of belief in gods, or belief God does not exist. There exists many idiosyncratic definitions among atheists who usually use an argument similar to words having no inherent meaning and how they get their meaning from usage. So it seems that the argument that language changes and evolves 
gives no support to the claim that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing more. There's nothing in this argument that gives credence to the idea of a singular definition of atheism or that other usages are incorrect. It does, however, support the argument that a lack of belief in gods is one of the usages and definitions of atheism. And this can also be supported by the fact that it has entered into contemporary dictionaries as one of the definitions of atheism. And we can even find it in some of the modern philosophical dictionaries and philosophical encyclopedias. Okay. So, as I said, atheism defined as a lack of belief in gods is listed in the dictionary. This is often used as a defense that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing more. There's several problems with this defense of atheism being a lack of belief in gods and nothing more, of course. As with other defenses, it shows a misunderstanding of how language works. It also shows a misunderstanding of how dictionaries themselves works. This defense indicates that those putting it forward believe that dictionaries are prescriptive, that they define how words must be used, or that a particular dictionary is exhaustive of how particular words are used. This is an incorrect view of the purpose of dictionaries. Dictionaries are descriptive. They simply tell us how words are commonly used, and multiple dictionaries might give us multiple results for how a particular word is used. A general dictionary will give us how a word is commonly used, and different general dictionaries might give different descriptions of how a word is commonly used. Like I said, they're not prescriptive. They don't tell us how a word ought to be used. It's also the case that a technical dictionary may give a different definition of a particular word to the one used in the general dictionary. Because a technical dictionary gives a description of how the word is used in certain paradigms like biology, physics, philosophy, mathematics, and that kind of thing. And this defense also ignores, like I said, the fact that multiple general purpose dictionaries define the word atheism in multiple ways. So not only can we find multiple usages for the word atheist in some dictionaries, we also find different usages in different dictionaries. Because of the nature of how language works, we would also find that as we go back each year, the definition given in the dictionary that we use might be different to the definition given in the contemporary dictionary. So if we are to accept the argument that a particular definition for a particular word in a particular dictionary tells us how a word must be used and that particular definition for that particular word in that particular dictionary is the singular correct definition, then we've got some questions that we have to ask. First, in the case of competing definitions from different dictionaries, how do we know which particular dictionary is the correct one? And if dictionaries define how a word must be used, then are contemporary dictionaries all incorrect and older dictionaries the correct definitions? Should we all return to older definitions? Does this also mean that we should read older texts in line with newer usages? After all, those older usages are no longer correct. And of course, the most important question, is this line of defense also not counter to the defense that language evolves? After all, if dictionaries define how a word must be used, then language can never evolve in the sense that old words take on new meaning. So once again, we see that another common defense does nothing to support this argument that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing more. Instead, what we find is that it gives legitimacy for the lack of belief in God's usage. Another popular argument used to defend the idea that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing more is the idea that atheists get to define what atheism is. This argument also comes in another form which is the argument that it is generally accepted to use the speaker's definition when understanding it. There's problems with both of these arguments, of course, as can be seen by the claim that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing more. So let's take a look at the first form of this argument first that atheists get to define what atheism is. If we consider this idea, then it immediately makes the argument that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing more a void argument, for there are multiple atheists that define atheism in multiple ways. This entry for atheism in the Rutledge Encyclopedia of Philosophy was written by William Rowe, 
It defines atheism as those who affirm the non-existence of God. So, atheists are people who believe that God does not exist. William Rowe is an atheist. So, here we see a contradiction. The argument that atheists get to define what atheism is would suggest that this Rutledge Encyclopedia entry was correct and that atheism was being defined correctly. Yet the argument that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing more would seem to suggest that Roe was defining the word atheism incorrectly. And if he's defining it incorrectly, then this is a contradiction between the claim of what atheism is and the defense of the claim based on who gets to define what atheism is. Now, one might argue here that this is simply one atheist defining it in a way that does not match the lack of belief in God's definition. But there are many other examples that can be presented. So here we see another example of atheism being defined as the belief that God does not exist. This entry from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy was written by philosopher Paul Draper, who is also an atheist. And here we see one more. Here we see the same definition being proposed by C.M. Lorkowski in his paper Atheism. C.M. Lorkowski too is an atheist. We will also come across plenty of atheists on Twitter using the definition belief God does not exist. We only have to look to the superb real atheology and the superb Emerson Green and the superb Ben Watkins to find examples of atheists using it in this way. So if we are to accept this defense that atheists get to define what atheism is, then those arguing that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else must concede that there are multiple usages of atheism. If those arguing that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else insist that atheists using the belief God does not exist definition are using the word incorrectly, then they must concede that the the atheists get to define what atheism is defense doesn't hold any weight and this defense must be dropped. The same counter arguments hold true for the other form of this argument, that we should ask the individual what definition they are using. For if it's the case that we should ask the speaker what definition they are using, then this immediately concedes that there is more than one definition of atheism that can be used. It also shows that the claim that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else is false. For if this is all that atheism is, then it would not be generally accepted to use the speaker's definition when understanding what atheism is. It would be the case that if atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else, then it wouldn't be generally accepted to use the speaker's definition. For any definition that deviates from the lack of belief in gods would be an unacceptable definition. Both claims counter each other. This means that this argument fails to defend the idea that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else. Like all the other arguments presented, they contain contradictions and they counter each other. For us to accept one argument, we must dismiss the other, and vice versa. Like all other arguments made for atheism being a lack of belief in gods and nothing else, these arguments simply show that there are multiple accepted and acceptable usages of the word atheism. There are obviously more arguments than this that are used by some atheists to show that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else. However, these are some of the most common that I've come across. And as can be seen, none of them actually prove the case that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else. The arguments themselves are generally fallacious and at best show that there are multiple usages of the word atheist. There's no single correct definition of atheism. Just by the nature of language, itself it would be impossible for there to be a single correct definition of the word atheism. This goes for all sides in the correct usage and the usage wars. Some of us may prefer one usage over another and others prefer a different usage. We may even have reasons for preferring that usage over the other. However, our preferences do not validate the declaration that there is only a singular acceptable definition of atheism and that all other definitions are are simply incorrect. 
It's often the case that we hear atheists claiming that atheism has no dogma, and that atheists are free thinkers and free from the dogma of religion. Yet this argument that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else is dogmatic thinking in and of itself. As we've seen, it's a pretty trivial matter to show that the word atheist is used in multiple ways. It can be seen being used in multiple ways in various encyclopedias, it can be seen being used in a different way in philosophical texts, and various dictionaries give multiple different definitions for the word. It's also a pretty trivial matter to show that dictionaries don't define how a word ought to be used, but simply describe how it is used. It doesn't take much work to show that the arguments used to defend the idea that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else are all faulty arguments. They're all based on fallacious reasoning and a misunderstanding of how language works. In other words, it's not hard to show that this idea that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else is simply a belief about the word atheism, and a faulty belief at that. It's also a pretty strongly held belief by many atheists, and one that's often expressed and argued as if it is some kind of fact. It's also a belief that appears to be impervious to evidence for most of those defining atheism as a lack of belief in gods and nothing else. Many will even dismiss the evidence that atheism is used in multiple ways, and that it is valid to use it in multiple ways. It's as if this position must be held at all costs, and no amount of evidence is enough to show otherwise. Which is a pretty odd stance considering many of the claims we hear from many of those holding this dogmatic position. Many will declare that evidence will change their mind. Yet, for those same people, no amount of evidence will change their mind that atheism is more than just a lack of belief in gods. Many claim to be skeptics. Yet, those same people do not hold any skepticism towards the claim that atheism is just a lack of belief in gods and nothing more. Not only do they not hold any skepticism towards that claim, but they will also defend it dogmatically in the face of opposing evidence. But there's a pretty big and important question to ask here. Why can't it be both? It appears to me that there is nothing stopping those that argue that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else from simply dropping that position and agreeing that there are multiple usages of the word atheism. Accepting that there are multiple usages does nothing to invalidate the definition a lack of belief in gods. If they accept that there are multiple usages, it doesn't mean that they can no longer identify as atheists. The existence of multiple usages simply means that they have to clarify which version of atheism they hold to. And as shown earlier, this is something that many atheists argue is generally accepted anyway. That we should find out what version of atheism the atheist has adopted and use that version when in discussion with them. So why then are so many atheists so willing and eager to argue for what is so obviously a faulty conclusion? Why are so many atheists so willing to ignore their principles about evidence and skepticism and very various other principles to argue for what is clearly a false belief, especially when accepting the conclusion that there is more than one definition and usage of the term atheism doesn't invalidate their definition and usage, nor does it invalidate their identifying as an atheist. The only thing that dogmatically holding on to this faulty idea that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else does is call into question the idea that they are actually truth seekers or want to believe as many true things as possible, or that they are the skeptics that they identify as. There's so much more that can be said about the usage wars, of course, but this video is long enough as it is. You've heard me rant and blather on for long enough. It does cover the basics of the arguments made by those championing this idea that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else, though. It shows that the claim that there is a singular definition of atheism is a faulty claim, and that the arguments that support the claim are just not convincing arguments, at least not to anybody who isn't already convinced of the arguments. They are based on fallacious reasoning, and at best support the idea that there are multiple legitimate definitions and usages of the term atheism. In some cases, the defenses not only contradict each other, but the defenses that are used also contradict the claim that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing more. 
We've also seen that those arguing for the single usage and arguing that other usages are simply incorrect are doing so dogmatically. This doesn't apply to all making this argument, of course. For those who may be arguing it because they have picked up the argument from people like Aaron Ra, Matt Dillahunty, the ACA, the American Atheist, Randolph Richardson, and other popular atheist names. Or they may simply have picked up the argument from their interactions with other online atheists. Those making the argument based on those kind of interactions can't be accused of being dogmatic. They are, at best, misinformed. However, there are those that have been introduced to these other usages, and those that have heard the counter-arguments to the claim that there is only one definition of atheism. There are those that have dismissed evidence showing that there are multiple usages of the term atheism, and those that have been introduced to arguments about how word usages go, and how dictionary definitions are descriptive, and the fallacious reasoning behind the arguments for the idea that atheism is a lack of belief in gods and nothing else. It is these atheists that appear to be stuck in this mode of dogmatic thinking. Dogmatic thinking driven, dare I say, by ideological motive. This mode of dogmatic thinking causes them to be stuck in a falsehood, and a falsehood that is being defended unnecessarily. After all, as stated, there simply is no need to be stuck in this falsehood. Accepting that there are multiple usages doesn't cause them to have to abandon their usage, nor does accepting that there are multiple usages mean that they have to abandon their identification as atheists. Accepting there are multiple usages means no loss for them, but sticking to their guns in this drive to enforce a singular usage does mean a loss for atheists in general. This drive to enforce a singular usage means that atheists argue with each other unnecessarily, with the lack of belief in gods and nothing else group attempting to erase the identities of those who use a different usage. A usage that's well established in philosophy, and a usage that comes with plenty of counter-apologetics and philosophical arguments that establish good reasons for believing that God does not exist, which is another harm that enforcing a singular usage brings with it. Shunning the idea that belief God does not exist is a valid form of atheism, and dismissing it as a part of atheism turns people away from looking at this wealth of argumentation. It causes atheism to be stuck in a revolving door of catchphrases like prove your God, where's the evidence, you have no evidence, rather than equipping them with a rich arsenal of counter-arguments designed to take on the best of the theist side. It reduces atheism to what is essentially a caricature of itself. This drive to enforce a singular usage also causes another harm. This need to envelope all other identities such as the agnostic and the agnostic and the apatheist actually causes those who identify as these things to turn away from atheists and to dismiss, a dismiss atheist activism. This causes harm because these people may full well support what atheist activists are trying to achieve. We can't really normalize atheism by forcing people to identify with us. All we can do is harm atheist activism by forcing people to identify with us with us. Do you want to be forced to identify as an agnostic if you fit the bill of philosophical agnosticism? How would you feel if somebody tried to force an identity other than what you identify as onto you? Just ask yourself that question. So all I can suggest to those attempting to enforce this singular usage is to stop and think about it. Stop and think about your reasons for doing it, and stop and think about the arguments that you're making. Consider why you feel the need to hold on to a falsehood, especially when accepting the truth makes no difference to your usage and identity. Is behaving irrationally, thinking unreasonably, behaving dogmatically, and causing harm to atheism and atheist activism worth enforcing this singular usage? Thanks for listening, guys.